It is time for another Zerg live game and today I am playing a Zerg vs Protoss for you at the same time as I am also giving commentary to it. And speaking of which, I've actually been switching out my Zerg vs Protoss quite a little bit as of late. At the very least, like the unit composition that I'm running with is a lot more Baneling heavy. I found Banelings to be extremely helpful against the Adept heavy play in the earlier stages that's extremely common nowadays. And I've really been enjoying like a Ravager Link Bane composition in the early to middle stages of the match. Obviously, we do still get our Hydras and our Lurkers and eventually our Ultras and our Brute Lords and, you know, pretty much anything that we can find, really. And I gotta say, ZVP is one of the few matchups where every single Zerg unit is viable, except for maybe the Swarm Host. Rest in peace, the Swarm Host. It was the one unit we only made in Heart of the Swarm and we made a lot of those. <laughs> or actually, I didn't really ever make uh, all too many of them because I never liked the unit all too much, but... Other than that, we do see pretty much every single Zerg unit in this matchup, and it's awesome. It's awesome. We will need to scout out what my opponent is going for, but I think I am going to focus on a bunch of Zerglings and Banelings in the earlier stages of the match. Now, obviously, we are on Frostelli. This is one of the biggest maps, if not the very biggest map right now in the map pool. I think it actually is. Considering it's massive and four players, generally speaking, you're not going to see, you know, all too many early game cheeses just because your opponent is going to have a very easy uh, or very difficult time, rather, figuring out where you have spawned. So I'm going to be flying out with my overlords. We do see that uh, probe get into my main base right now. No big deal at all, as I'm already going to be producing my first set of Zerklings as soon as I have the larva for it. And obviously with that, I'm also going to be getting my queen in the natural as well as the Zerkling speed. So very standard. Now I'm going to leave my uh, I'm going to leave my Zerklings or my drone rotter in the gas geyser. As I do want to grab myself, and it looks like we're cross position, which is great for me. But I do want to grab myself the, um, the overlord speed in this match as well. It's something I've been messing around with too. And I found it to be super helpful. I found it to be extremely beneficial to have that early game overlord speed. As it really does help you... Um, you know, figure out the build that your opponent is going for a whole lot easier. And actually, let me take my third base over here, because usually expanding away from your opponent is the way to go. Gonna start up the Zerkling or the Overlord speed here, as well as the additional Queen in the main base. Gonna get one dedicated to Creep Spreading, and as soon as I can clean up this probe, I'll also nil down that, uh, that third base. We get some very dark and gloomy music here in the background. No biggie. He is leaving right now with the drone, or with the probe rudder, which probably means that he's got a uh, an adept coming in. I do have a uh, rally, relatively early uh, zerking speed coming in here as well, but I'm a little worried of losing those zerking. So you know what? I'm just gonna go ahead and yeah, there we go. We do see the double adept come in. Fair enough. I'm gonna go ahead and make uh, a couple of zerkings here. Usually you need about eight or so to clean up uh, the double adept pressure, but considering we've got a whole lot of queens here. I don't think this should be all too much of an issue. Link speed is done. Third base is going up. I'm going to start doing some scouting for my opponent. And I've got enough Zerklings right now to stop the, you know, the Adepts from really doing damage to us. I'll send them up to the main instead. And it looks like he's just cancelled it. He knows that I've got enough right now. And with that, I'm going to start executing, you know, the Zerk macro. That's really kind of the strategy right now. So I'm going to go ahead and grab myself the blind, uh, blind Spore Crawlers. Always very helpful. And I'm, tr I'm really trying to narrow down the amount of options that my opponent has. So look at that. Look at that. All right. All right. That's a huge pickup. That's a huge pickup. I know right now that at the very least my opponent has the option to go for a, a heavy adept kind of play. And considering the amount of gateways we are seeing from my opponent right now as well, I think that is very likely. Looks like he may very well be trying to get a third base here as well. So I don't want to over drone here. I'll just get this one anyway. Doesn't really matter all too much. We'll get one more gas here too. But I think my opponent is planning on doing at least a little bit of aggression. I haven't seen all too many gateways, but three is enough to at the very least do some sort of pressure. And it looks like that's pretty much exactly what's the case right now. So I made a couple of overlords. They will be finishing up shortly. And I've also got um, my Roach Warren finishing up. I think that's the main thing we're going to need here to, uh, to stop this aggression from really, you know, doing all too much to us. There is a Robo Bay going down, so he's not planning to go all in with this. But he's definitely trying to get at least a bunch of damage in. He doesn't have a, uh, you know, a War Prism or anything just yet. So, all things considered, this should be fine for me. I'm going to make a big round of Zerkings here as well, so I can counter-attack after the aggression. And use those to potentially counter his third base. So really, it's all about, like, trying to lose as little economy as we possibly can right now. Fine for me. And I'm gonna run across the map right now with the Zerklings. No particular reason, uh, you know, not to. I don't need all my army here to clean this up. We'll transition towards the lair here too, and I'm getting a lot of additional 
Uh, a lot of additional uh, drones now too. Really trying to pump up that eco. Third base is going down right now, which is perfect for me. As I will be able to deal that or kill that right at the time as it arrives and potentially even delay it further. So, so far it's pretty straightforward. So far it's pretty straightforward. Not seeing a whole lot of army of my opponent yet. I'm gonna add on my second Evo chamber here. Just because that's more than likely going to be something we are gonna need here. Just to get those upgrades. Gotta keep in mind though, there's a chance my opponent is gonna go for Dark Templar here. I haven't really seen a whole lot yet, but this is exactly the style that I've been playing against a lot on the ladder as of late. And the one that I've been trying to practice up against a lot as well. Oh, actually, I already saturated that one. Okay. Gonna need a bunch of gas here. Okay. Sadly, did not quite get the block in. Which is a shame. What we do see is army composition right now. Pretty standard. My creep spread has been lacking. Not all too happy about that. I'm gonna go ahead and grab myself as many of those upgrades here as well. And I'll start putting some creep on all of the bases in the corners of the maps too, just in case he's, you know, planning on taking those. Now that we've got a reasonable saturation, I think this is a good timing for me to start taking my fourth base and start really pumping out that army. Need a couple more workers, but that's about it. One more here, three more there. All right, start making a lot of army here. So the idea is that I know that my opponent is more than likely gonna be pressuring me here too, right? We have know that, or we know that he's got uh, less, uh, less army than myself. The very least less economy than myself, and he did have a lot of units already ready to go. So I want to pressure him with Zirkling, Baneling, Ravager here, ideally. So I gotta make sure that I save up my gas as well, and I'll, I'll make some safety banes just because I can. Really powerful composition, and obviously Banelings do benefit from the uh, from the upgrade of the uh, of the uh, melee upgrades too. A lot of people don't seem to be aware of that, but yeah, they most definitely do more damage after plus one melee. Even though they suicide themselves in. <laughs> okay, trying to get as many Ravagers here as I possibly can while still adding on more and more uh, army here too. I'm hoping that he is going to move across the map. That was kind of, kind of the assumption I made, seeing the massive army that he already had ready to go earlier. Which may be something that I'm going to have to rethink. Well, he doesn't have all too much. You know what? Let's get moving. Let's get moving. Okay. Fort base. Oh, he's actually moving out right now. If he's moving out right now, that would be perfect for me. I was just about to hit him in the face. My plus one, plus one is about to finish up here too. If I add on a couple more banes, that's only going to make things easier. I'll move a couple of Ravager over as well. And as long as I manage to break the force fields, we're going to be in a really powerful place. He knows about my fourth, I think. Yeah, he actually flew the, uh, he actually flew the unit over, obviously. And I think... I think this is about time. Oh, so much! For some reason, he completely derped out on the force fields. I mean, I, I was already preemptively shooting all of my corrosive bios there, which really allows me to obviously break them as soon as they land. As you may have noticed, I wasn't necessarily focusing all of my attention on hitting them in the middle of his army, but rather also put down a couple in other places. And with that, I think we're in a really powerful position to start pushing into several bases that he's got. Now, we have to be careful. Looks like there may very well be Dark Templar or something like that out here on the map. I'm not hearing them yet, but I gotta be very careful here about this unit composition. As obviously Archon, when not, you know, properly taken care of, can easily murder your stuff. I'm gonna start tacking up as well. But I really do want to keep on pushing here. Just try and, and be annoying, right? Just try and be annoying. We know he just wasted all of his Photon Overcharge as he thought I was gonna push in really aggressively earlier on into the match, and my opponent does decide to call the GG. So all things considered, very happy with my progress in Zerg vs. Protoss so far. As you can see, it's just a matter of like disabling whatever pressure the Protoss has planted in the game. And once you do, once you manage to figure out exactly the build... Ah, I didn't have that base hold key, that's why I was floating so much. Uh, but once you figure out the build that your opponent is going for, so that's really why I'm getting that, you know, early game Overlord Scout, it's just a matter of like countering it accordingly without like over making army 
Or if you do overmake army, at the very least, realize when they're gonna be taking the third base and try and get a counter of that. But once you figure out the build that they are going for, like, Protoss is very limited, it seems like, in their tech switches, you know? Like, later on into the game, once they've got, like, three, four bases saturated, they can quite easily switch around the builds that they're going for and, you know, all of a sudden make a bunch of Void Rays and all that, but... In the early stages of the match, after I scouted the Twilight Council as well as the Forges, like, it, it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, like, limited. The amount of options that Protoss has. Then we only saw three gateways. We saw that he tried adding on the uh, third base right around, I believe, 4.35-ish minutes or so. And we also saw that he ended up getting a robotic facility. Like, all of those things sort of tie in the strategy that I was going for more and more and more. And I found out that if you play a whole lot of Protoss versus Zerg, if you, like, focus heavily on the scouting and you really focus on the kind of strategies that your opponent could potentially be going for, you can figure out how many workers you, you can make before really starting up your own production, at which point it's just a matter of, like, countering their aggression. And you could see there that my opponent, he didn't even really, he didn't really even expect me to, to hit, hit yet, right? Like, the reason, obviously, why he didn't, uh, why he didn't really force field watch with his army earlier when we met him right here against the, uh, against the choke here. It's obviously because he wasn't really paying close attention to it, but he didn't really expect me to hit him in the face like I did. And all things considered, very, very happy with the end result. And other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more, make sure you subscribe so you get a notification as soon as I upload more. And also, while you're at it, make sure to follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Links are in the description. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile, and I'll see you in the next one.